Every so often in Wisconsin, new potentially invasive insects appear. Today we're talking about one of these insects, the purple carrot seed moth. And joining us today is PJ Leash, who is the director of the UW Insect Diagnostic Lab. Well, thank you. Pleasure to be here this day talking about a, a relatively new invasive insect in Wisconsin called the purple carrot seed moth, and I'm going to dig into its biology and uh, potential impacts in terms of what we might see in the state. Uh, when it comes to non-native exotic insects in Wisconsin, it's interesting from my perspective at the Insect Diagnostic Lab here at UW-Madison, I typically see two to three new non-native insects show up in the state every year. Um, the impacts of each of those is going to vary quite a bit. There are certain insects that even though they're non-native, they get here and they really don't cause much if any issues for us. But we know historically we have some major pests along these lines, things like emerald ash borer and uh, gypsy moth. So the impacts of each uh, non-native species can vary quite a bit. And last year in 2018, I did have about three or so non-native insects show up. Two of those I think are really going to be um, very, very minor pests, if they're even pests at all. Um, one insect, though, that we may see some potential pest issues with is called the purple carrot seed moth. And that is the focus of today's talk in terms of where we might see damage from it. I'm anticipating potentially some issues, especially in home gardens with um, plants, herbs like dill, for example, uh, and several other uh, closely related plants. So we'll talk about that uh, in details in just a moment. So what is the purple carrot seed moth? It's a species of uh, European and Asian origin, um, so you can find it in parts of, of Western uh, Europe, um, even into parts of, of Russia as well. It showed up not that long ago in North America. It showed up in eastern Canada in Ontario in 2008. That was one of the reasons when I got my first samples in. It took me a little while to figure out what they were. The caterpillars are distinctive, and I'll show you those momentarily, uh, but they weren't in any of the caterpillar guidebooks because it's so new to North America. So showed up in uh, North America, again in Ontario, a little over a decade ago. Showed up in the Midwest, places like Illinois, about four or five years ago, 2014 and, and 2015. And then in 2018, we had our first confirmed report last summer in Wisconsin. And true to its name, uh, with carrot in the name of the purple carrot seed moth, this insect is associated with plants of the carrot family. And I'll talk about those host plants in a little bit, but uh, carrots, um, parsnip, dill, and things along those lines can be affected by this pest. And specifically, where this insect feeds is in the flowers and on plants from the carrot family. We call these large bell-shaped flowers umbels. So they're specifically feeding in the reproductive structures of the plants. And let's look at the distribution um, within Wisconsin. So again, last year in 2018, we had our first confirmed report of this insect in the state. Uh, and that report came from Kiwanee County up by Door County got the word out about this insect and then within a short period of time we ended up getting reports confirmed from eight different counties. So talk about uh, kind of going from zero to 60 pretty quickly. We went from no records of this one in the state to having uh, records confirmed from eight different counties. You can see on the map here these counties are primarily located in eastern parts of Wisconsin along the Lake Michigan border. Um, we did get it as far west as Columbia County near Arlington, which is just north of Madison, about a half hour drive or so. So that's where it's at in the state, but again, it likely will pop up in more locations in 2019. So definitely something to have on your radar and be on the lookout for this one in your yards and garden. In terms of what the purple carrot seed moth looks like, this is the adult and they are grayish brownish moths about half of an inch long sometimes a little over a half of an inch long so not particularly big insects but they have a grayish appearance on their wings they do have a pale or whitish patch of hairs or CD up near the head so a fairly distinctive appearance to these we do see one generation per year, although it's not particularly synchronized. And what I mean by that is it's not a very discrete period when the adults come out. Um, we saw a lot of adult activity last year during the summer months, June, July, and August. So we can get uh, quite a broad uh, range of the emergence of the adults. And they do spend most of their uh, adult life or most of their life in that adult stage. 
Uh, in terms of the caterpillars, and I mentioned before, these are very, very distinctive. Um, the caterpillars aren't particularly big, only about a quarter of an inch long, maybe a little bit more than that. And if you think of um, a good size reference, a standard number two pencil or uh, your typical ballpoint pen, that's got a width of about a quarter of an inch. So these aren't particularly big caterpillars, but they are the damaging life stage. The caterpillars have chewing mouth parts, and so they are, again, up in the flowers or umbels of plants for the carrot family. They are chewing on those floral structures, causing physical damage. Um, they also can produce some webbing, and I'll show you some pictures of that uh, momentarily. So with the small size, though, each caterpillar individually doesn't cause much damage, but you can get easily a couple dozen of them per flower. And so together they can cause some significant damage. But again, in terms of their appearance, they're dark reddish or orangish or brownish in color with some very distinctive white polka dots on their body. So overall a very, very distinctive appearance makes them easy to identify. So that's the caterpillar stage. In terms of the damage that they cause, I just mentioned that uh, the caterpillars use their chewing mouth parts to feed on the floral structures or that umbel of plants from the carrot family. They also can produce copious amounts of silk webbing similar to spider webbing, but you can see in this picture here on the left-hand portion of the slide, that's some very extensive um, webbing that was produced, and we can see the damage there on that plant. So if this were a garden herb like dill, um, that would essentially be unusable for making pickles and, and using it in cooking and things like that. So that's where I'm anticipating the damage. This insect only goes for those above ground floral structures, so they're not going to be damaging, say, the tap roots of carrots and things like that. Again, it's this above ground type of damage that we see. Eventually, those caterpillars do turn to their pupil stage, little brownish cigar-shaped pods, which you would see amongst that webbing inside of the flower. So those are all signs to look for. And again, the webbing that they produce, that can really catch your eye and, and make them easy to spot. In terms of host plants, again, we're talking about plants from the carrot family. So carrots can be attacked, parsnip can be attacked. Uh, and keep in mind, I've got asterisks next to both of those because I want to point out that the wild forms of both of these can be um, potentially attacked by this insect. So queen anne's lace or, or wild carrot, um, wild parsnip. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think this insect is going to have much of any impact on something like wild parsnip. That's a common question I've gotten, but uh, we're not hearing reports from the eastern U.S. where this insect has been around for a lot longer period of time. We're not hearing those reports of it taking out wild parsnip. So uh, unfortunately, um, that isn't going to be the case, but it could, in theory, feed on those. Perhaps the commonest plant I've gotten uh, reports from thus far has been dill. So again, we're not expecting huge impacts on the state, but home gardeners growing dill and other herbs could potentially be affected. Cilantro or coriander, uh, perhaps anise. If you look in the literature, all of those plants have been attacked. There's also some speculation that similar plants from the carrot family, like parsley, perhaps fennel or caraway, may also be attacked. So if you're growing those types of, of plants, herbs, or crops in your garden, or uh, you have a neighbor that is, or you have wild versions growing in your area, you might potentially bump into this purple carrot seed moth sometime in the near future. And if you do bump into it, um, what can potentially be done to deal with it? Luckily, I think we have quite a few options out there. And in the grand scheme of things, we don't know how big of a splash this one is really going to make. Again, I'm anticipating perhaps our, our biggest complaints coming from home gardeners with dill. Um, again, it's not affecting tap roots of carrots, so commercial carrot growers aren't really going to be impacted in that regard. If you were trying to grow carrots to get seed to have next year to plant in your garden, you know, then it might be more of a concern in a case like that. So herbs are really the main focus I'm looking at at this point. In terms of how you could potentially manage it, if you do see it in your area, if you've got a small patch of, of dill or other herbs, you may be able to go out and just do some hand picking of the caterpillars or squishing them. That's a, a very simple non-chemical method. If you're very particular about your dill or, or other herbs for home pickling and, and cooking and things like that, another option, again, non-chemical, may be physical exclusion, essentially putting a mesh bag over that developing flower head so that you have a physical barrier Therefore, the female moths can't come in and lay eggs, and you won't get the caterpillars on there causing damage. So those are two very practical, kind of simple solutions. If you are constrained for time or um, you know, other reasons and you want to lean more towards uh, sprays, 
There are some conventional sprays out there that could be used on uh, the plants that I mentioned. Otherwise, there are some, um, I think, will be some pretty good options for organic type and, and reduced impact type sprays. And we're talking about things like insecticidal soap, which can work well against caterpillars as long as you spray them directly. Neem oil, Bacillus thuringiensis kerstachii, that's the uh, strain of Bt, Btk, that works specifically against caterpillars. That's an organic option. And then spinosad, which you may know is the product Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. That's a common one you can find at hardware stores and, and garden centers. That's also organic. All of these I uh, expect would help provide some protection. So again, we've got a lot of different ways to deal with this potential insect. If you'd like to know more about the uh, purple carrot seed moth, I do have a post on uh, the blog that I have on my website um, called What's Crawling in the Lab. If you're interested in checking it out, uh, please feel free to visit the web address at the bottom corner of the slide and browse through the blog entries. It's from July of, of 2018, and you can get some additional information on this insect. And with that said, we'll move into any questions. It sounds like you got several reports last summer, you said. Were people mostly noticing the adult moths, or they, were they reporting caterpillars? Good question. In those cases, it essentially was folks noticing the caterpillars, and really perhaps what they noticed first was the webbing that was tying together bits of the, the dill flowers or cilantro or things like that. So it mostly was the larval stage, although if you were to take a close peek at that, you may see some of the adults flying around. Given that this is a relatively new insect to Wisconsin, I, I imagine you'd like to track how it's spreading across the state. What's the best way for people to report this insect if they do find it? So I am indeed interested in keeping track of this one. I am keeping track uh, uh, online with a, a map that I keep um, in uh, one of my databases in my office. And so if you do uh, find this one or think you have found it, feel free to reach out to me by uh, email. If you make your way to my website, um, I've got my email address on there. And this is one that you can very easily confirm with a couple of pictures. So if you're able to take some pictures of that webbing or those polka dotted caterpillars and email that to me, that's a really simple, easy way to help confirm this one. So I'd love to hear about, especially new county records in the state. Thanks again, PJ, for teaching us a little bit about the purple carrot seed moth. We encourage anybody, particularly who is, who is growing herbs in their home gardens, to keep an eye out for this insect this year and send in your reports to PJ or to us at the First Detector Network, and we'll make sure that PJ gets those reports.